Hey everyone and welcome back. Before we begin here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others who want to test their math skills with these types of test questions. So this will be our 39th part in this math skill series and what we have going on here is that we have to determine the area of the blue region shown and we're given some bits of information about this overall shape. We are told that A to D is the diameter of a semicircle shown here. And then we have B, C, E, and F over here is a square that is inscribed within our semicircle AD. And then we also have E, B, and C here is part of a quarter circle. And we are shown that C to D is four centimeters. So in order to find the blue area here, what we're going to have to do is we are going to expand. And this method that I'm going to show is just one potential method that you could use to solve this. It's not necessarily the best or the slowest or the fastest. It's just one potential method that you could use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand out and complete this entire circle of AD and then complete the quarter circle into a semicircle from EBC and then make the square into a full rectangle. And what we would end up with is something like this. So remember our blue area is right in through here. So in order to determine our blue area, what we have here is that two times our blue area, since we've expanded and we have pretty much doubled up here, is going to be equal to the yellow area shown on the left circle or the left portion here, subtracting out the red area from the middle one. So how do we determine the red area? Well, the red area we can get because it is a semicircle, so we will just need to know the radius, which we can just call x right here. Once we determine this radius, which is the side of one of our squares, well, which is the side of the entire square because it's all four equal sides. Once we determine that, we can get our radius and then we can get our semicircle area for the red area. Well, the yellow area is a little bit trickier. So the yellow area will be the area of the entire circle that envelops everything. And that will be subtracting out the green area shown on the far right here. So in order to get the green area, because in order to get the area of the circle, we just need the overall radius. And that would be what AD is divided by two. So in order to get the green area, what we're gonna have to do is that we are going to have to determine a few things here. And we can use a circle sector area, which would be this entire envelopment, including the green portion and the white portion, which we just need to know what this angle is right here. And then we can subtract out this triangle area, which occurs in white here between the dashed lines and the solid black line. That would give us our green area. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to determine here. So let's just start picking um, all this information off. All righty. So, this is just a redrawn picture of our original, but with the labels and everything um, pretty much doubled up here in the mirrored version. So I'm going to make O my center point for my entire circle all the way around. And I'm going to call the side of my squares X. Well, I also know that this is four centimeters over here from C to D. And since my square is inscribed inside of the semicircle portion here, since it is a square, that means it has equal sides and it is inscribed, which means by definition that this other side from A to B is also four centimeters. That is the proof of being inscribed. All right, so what else can I determine here? Well, if I were to draw my dashed line, which I drew earlier for my green area here, and let's just draw it down here to point G as well. This dashed line will be my radius of my large circle. Okay, what else can I find out here? Well, since we are inscribed, the square is inscribed in the semicircle, and it has length X for the square, and O is the center of the semicircle, the center of the overall circle, that means that B to O will have a distance of X over 2. It will be directly in the center because, once again, the square is inscribed. All right, so now we have some unknowns here, and we need to find our radius and our x here, and we will eventually need to find this angle right here um, between my dashed lines. But let's work on getting x, and let's work on getting our radius here first. So utilizing the triangle here that I have drawn of BEO, which is this top triangle right here, this right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem since it is, well, a right triangle. And what, what I have here is my radius squared 
which would be equal to x squared plus x over 2 squared from c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay, well, let's draw another, or let's do another thing here relating x and the radius. Well, based on my picture here, this dimension from O to A is also my radius. Well, what is that equal to? Well, my radius is also going to be equal to the four centimeters plus x over two. So now I have two equations here and two unknowns. What I can do is I can relate them. So what I'm going to take is I'm going to take this four plus x over two and plug it in for r up here and square it. So what I end up with my equation is I'm going to have four plus x over two squared is equal to x squared plus x over two squared. And then I'm just going to solve for x. So it just becomes a little bit of algebra here. So we'd have 16 plus two times 4x over 2 plus x over 2 squared is equal to x squared plus x over 2 squared. So we have some things that are going to drop out here. The x over 2s, this is going to simplify down. And what we end up with is 16 plus 4x is equal to x squared. So let's rearrange this. And we end up with x squared minus 4x minus 16 is equal to 0. So we end up with a quadratic equation, so we can easily solve for that quadratic equation using the formula of minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's go ahead and plug in our values, which I'm going to throw them down here. So we'd have a minus minus 4 plus or minus the square root of minus 4 squared minus off 4 times 1 times a minus 16. And then all of that divided by 2 times 1. So what we end up with here after simplifying down is 4 plus or minus the square root of 5. Well, 4 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 5 divided by 2. So we end up with 2 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. And we can only use the positive version here because the negative, the minus here would give us a negative value. You can't have a negative distance. So what this means is that x will be equal to 2 plus two square roots of five centimeters in distance. So we have found our side of our square. So with this, what we can do is come back up here and plug in that X value and get our radius. So R will just be four plus X over two, which would just be four plus two plus two square roots of five over two, which ends up giving me five plus the square root of five centimeters for my radius there. All right, so now with x and the radius, we can start getting a lot of information here. So let's go ahead and let's get some areas. So the area of my overall large circle, since I have the radius r here, so area of my entire circle will just be pi r squared, which is just equal to pi times five plus square root of five squared. And of course it doesn't come out to be a nice number, so we're just gonna do some rounding here. And it will be 164.496 centimeters squared. And I'm gonna put a star next to that, so we'll have to memorize, or not memorize it, but notice where it is and come back and gather it later. So also what we can do is that we can get the area of the red semicircle since remember X is the radius of the red semicircle from before. So area of red semicircle will just be pi times X squared over two, which gives me pi times two plus or minus two square roots of five over two. Well, actually, yeah. And then over two, which gives me 65.789 centimeters squared. And once again, we are, are going to star that. Alrighty, so now that we have our area of our circle, we have the red or the area of our red semicircle, we can work on getting the area in green. So this is what we're going to be working on now. So the green area. And what we're gonna to have to work with is the triangle area and then the circle sector area. 
So let's first get our angle that is occurring here at O. So we're going to work on this angle right here, which would give us the entire area of the circle sector, and then we're going to have to subtract out these two right triangles. All right. So what we have going on here, and we're just going to look at the top right triangle. So here is the angle that I'm looking for at O, and then I have E up here, and then I have B down here. So this would be 2 plus 2 square roots of 5 on this side. Our radius was 5 plus the square root of 5, and then x over 2 is 1 plus the square root of 5. So what I can utilize, and if I just call this, let's say this is alpha and this is 0. So the sine of alpha would be equal to the opposite of the hypotenuse, which is 2 plus 2 square roots of 5 over 5 plus the square root of 5. And then taking the sine inverse of this right side, my alpha angle comes out to be 63.435 degrees. Well, since I'm looking for the total angle of O, this is only half of it, so my total angle at O would just be two times that, which comes out to be 126.869 degrees for that total angle there. Alrighty, so then let's go ahead and get the area of these triangles, which they are two right triangles. So we would just have one half base times height and then times two. So just be basically uh, my base times my height here, which would be x times x over two. So the area of the large triangle, which is EOG, would just be two times my triangle of the BEO, which is I have shown right here. So it'd just be 2 times the 1 half times the base, which is 1 plus the square root of 5 times the height, which is 2 plus 2 square roots of 5. And that ends up giving me, of course, not a nice number. It is 20.944 centimeters squared. All right, so let's go ahead and let's determine our area of our circle sector utilizing this angle here. So this would just be our angle of 126.869 degrees divided by the total angle inside of the circle, which is 360 degrees. And then we would multiply that by pi and then multiply by our radius squared, which our radius is just five plus the square root of five squared. And this gives me a total of 57.971 centimeters squared. So my total area in green from before would just be this area of the circle sector subtracting off the area of my total triangles. So it would just be the 57.971 subtracting off 20.944. And this gives me 37.027 centimeters squared. All right, and that's another big piece of information. So if we scroll back up here, and see what we actually have here. So we have determined the area in green. We have determined the total area of the circle. So we can get our yellow area, which would be that. And then we've also determined our red area. And then finally, we can utilize both of those to get our blue area, which was our beginning, what we needed. All right, so we have our area of our circle, which is right here. We have our red semicircle area right there. And we have our total green. So our yellow area would just be our total circle area, which is 164.496 centimeters squared, subtracting off the area in green, which is 37.027 centimeters squared. And this gives us 127.469 centimeters squared. So then our area in blue here would just be this yellow area of 127.469, subtracting off the red area from before, which is 65.798, and then dividing by two, and that gives us a final answer of 30.836 centimeters squared for our final area in blue. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a new math skill along the way. And if you want to test your abilities even further, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you've done already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.